So this is a 64-year-old female with history of hepatitis C and cirrhosis. She also has a history of hepatocellular carcinoma. During uh, workup of her ACC, uh, a splenic aneurysm measuring approximately 1.8 centimeters was discovered. She has since then had two treatments of transarterial chemoembolization for her hepatocellular carcinoma, both via a left radial artery access. Next slide. You see her past medical and surgical history here. She has AFib, asthma. She's had an ASD repair in the past. She doesn't smoke or drink. Next slide. She's on these medications listed here. No allergies, no pertinent physical findings or lab work. Next slide. This is a CT image um, demonstrating the splenic aneurysm is partially calcified, as you can see, and it's quite sizable compared to her aorta. Next slide. This is a MIP reconstruction. Uh, from that CT data, and you can see it, the splenic aneurysm is actually at the hilum with multiple vessels originating from the aneurysm itself. Next slide. And this is actually an angiogram from one of the chemoembolizations, which demonstrates the aneurysm nicely here with, again, at the hilum with multiple vessels um, originating from the aneurysm itself. Next slide. So prior to the procedure, we performed a Barbeau test, and this is um, an app for the iPhone. It's a pulse oximeter, portable one, and she has Barbeau A, which is um, quite suitable for radial access. I know a lot of people have different approaches for how they do this, but uh, just to zoom out a little bit, we have the arm positioned on the side. We're using a towel as a rest. I've already accessed the left radial artery using a glide sheet slender. Uh, and the reason we chose a slender for this case is because we're not, we're probably going to use a five French diagnostic catheter, but we want to have the option to be able to use a six French guide catheter if need be. Um, we position the arm to the, to the side as close to the patient as possible. And we've given, uh, we've given our standard cocktail, which is uh, 3,000 units of heparin, 200 micrograms of nitroglycerin, and two and a half milligrams of verapamil. Okay, so what we have here is the first coil. This is a framing coil. The size of this particular coil is 20 by 50. And as, you're, as you see it going through the microcatheter here, uh, it's gonna create somewhat of a cage for the rest of our coils. Uh, this is what we would typically do as the first coil. Uh, it gives us a lot of support. Now, some people, and in some situations, we would coil the outflow first and not the aneurysm sac like we're doing here. But in this particular patient, there's actually three outflow vessels. So we decided that um, the case would probably be much safer to actually just call the aneurysm and leave the outflows. What, what, what you'll see is that if, if, if we, we can show the screen simultaneously, this coil is attached to this pusher wire. And as I retract my hand, I'm actually able to retract the coil. This coil is still attached to the pusher wire. Be, it maybe I don't like the way that the coil has been de deployed in the aneurysm. This is, this is very, very elegant technology, and it, it really dramatically improves the safety of a complex intervention like this. And again, I can reintroduce it into the patient and allow it to form whatever shape I want. And it's only until I'm absolutely comfortable with the configuration of the coil that I can detach it. And there's a, uh, there's a, a handle that allows it to be detached. This is the, 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 the handle. It's an electrolytic process, and hopefully we can capture this on, on, on camera, but essentially the back end of the coil is able to be introduced into the handle here. I hope you see there's a light there, and then I'm gonna essentially activate, and you saw those lights blink, and what that confirms to me is that I've detached the pusher wire from the coil. And now again, as we go back onto the, uh, the, the, the simultaneous screens, I'm gonna retract my pusher wire. Like and what you'll coil. see is that the coil is not coming back. The next coil that we're using is a smaller coil. Um, and so we're gonna push that through. This is actually a very helpful coil to have in people who are actually on anticoagulation because it doesn't rely on the clotting cascade to th thrombose the, the vessel. And so as you, as you see what I'm doing here, I'm actually pushing this coil with the pusher wire. And once I actually get into the sac, I'm sort of just filling in the gaps where the framing coil uh, created the scaffold. So if we embolize this and the, t and the two or three outflow vessels, you would expect that the antegrade flow to the spleen would significantly decrease. But what ultimately happens is that the collaterals will supply the parenchyma. 
collaterals being the gastric arteries, short gastric, gastroepiploic. Uh, they all collateralize the spleen. So even though we embolize the proximal or mid splenic artery, we don't have any infarction of the spleen in most cases. So we're going to stop when our coils start pushing out into the inflow artery. And so really what we want to do is we want to fill the entire sac. And then as you can see here, you're, we're starting to push ourselves out of the sac and into the proximal segment. So what we're going to do in that situation is fill as much as we can. And you can see how Rob actually redeployed that coil. He didn't like where it was, he pulled it back, and he got the rest of it into the aneurysm sac. So we're trying to really densely pack this so it has very little flow. She is on Coumadin, so we want to try to really keep this packed very tight that it will thrombose. If you look at this last coil that we're deploying here, it's forming a nice dense plug. And really what ultimately will help thrombose this is the, is the inflow plug. And so one or two more coils here I think is going to be exactly what, what we need. Um, if we see a little bit more stasis of flow in the proximal vessel, I think I'll be happy enough to stop. But as you can see, we're pretty good at what we have right now for this particular case. I think we're okay here.